Hi Scouts! Welcome to another video of the Scouts BSA Rank Advancement Series put on by the Chattahoochee Council BSA. I'm your host Chris and today we're going to learn about something really cool and it's near and dear to my heart. I love it. Fire. Are you ready to learn? I'm ready to teach. Let's go. So before we get started, let's talk about the three types of firewood. First we have our tinder. Typically tinder is going to be something that is easily flammable, like pine straw, grasses that are dried, things like that. And also looking at twigs that are less than the size of a pencil, the smaller the better. See that one's really tiny. So a lot of times these types of sticks, especially when dry, will catch a little bit quicker and that's the very basis of starting a successful fire. So tender, dried grasses, pine straw, smaller than a pencil. All right, the next step of the fire making process is gonna be your kindling. So kindling ranges anywhere from the size of say a pencil all the way up to the size of your thumb. And what that's gonna do when put on top of the kindling or the tender that is actually gonna give you a little bit more fuel to keep that fire burning just a little bit longer. Remember, tender is gonna be the quick fire stuff, get the spark going, get the flames going, and start a basis for the kindling to start burning. And so as the kindling burning, you see how big, that's about the size of your thumb, the kindling burning is gonna build an even stronger base so that you can start adding your third part of the firewood process. And the third type of firewood is going to be our fuel. Now once you get that good strong hot coal base going, anything bigger than say your wrist is going to be your fuel. And what that's going to do, especially if you're cooking, something like this that's a hardwood is going to take a lot of time and a lot of heat for this to actually catch on fire, but it's also going to burn a lot longer because of all that extra wood. Okay, so we have tinder, kindling, and fuel. The three steps for building a successful fire. Now, we're gonna talk about three different types of fires and what their uses are for. Let's go. Okay, so our first type of fire is a TP fire. Very simple, very basic, and you guys saw me do that really, really, really quickly. What can I say? I've made a lot of fires in my day. So the easiest thing is you basically take your tender and form a TP frame by balancing twigs. And a lot of times you can actually stick the, the ends down in the dirt to give you a little bit of support, especially if you have a lot of ash already in your campfire ring, which hopefully you don't. Hopefully people have cleaned them out, but and then you basically start layering the twigs and as you make your layers, make each one just a little bigger. Now we only have tinder and kindling on here. We didn't put any of the fuel um, because typically you'll wanna add that as you start getting flames and you start getting that base down um, for the fire. So TP fire, really good overall campfire, really fun to make sometimes. Um, the, the trick is to making sure you leave enough space to stuff some more tender down inside, but also that you don't make it too tight because you need air in there for the flames to actually catch things on fire. You need spark and air to create fire, okay? So TP fire, general usage, especially uh, hanging around camp if you're backpacking, very simple to make. Um, provides a pretty decent amount of warmth, um, but it is gonna be mostly centered close around the campfire ring. We'll talk about the next style, which is gonna be a log cabin. All right, and here we have a log cabin style fire. Now it gets its name from the cool kind of design. It's built with alternating logs, just like a log cabin. See, we have some air space underneath, and what that's gonna allow, it's gonna allow air to get up under there and fan that flame and keep this glowing hot. And about midway up, I like to build a little platform with some kindling, and that's where I'd put my tinder to actually start the fire. That way all of the top burns up and as it starts to fall in on itself, it's gonna heat up these bigger logs on the bottom and start to catch them on fire. And when it all finally falls down in the middle, these logs are gonna catch. And then from there, you just keep adding your sticks, alternating sticks, just like this, 
and keep your fire going all night long. Now that's a pretty neat little campfire. What you think? All right, and the last style of fire we're gonna talk about today is the lean-to fire. Now we start with a very strong base with fuel, couple of big logs there, and then we're basically going to make a shelter, kind of like in Wilderness Survival Merit Badge. You're gonna make a shelter by stacking the sticks and leaning them against the fuel while allowing enough air space underneath to get that air to, to build that fire hot, but also so that we can stick some tinder underneath there. So this is all kindling on top. We got the fuel as the base, and then you stick your tinder underneath, and as you light it, you gotta make sure you leave enough air space on both sides as well as along here so that that fire can really get hot and catch this on fire. And then when, you're, when you got it roaring, you just keep adding your fuel all along to keep that fire roaring. So, now that we've showed you the tinder, the kindling, and the fuel, the three types of firewood, and we've showed you three different styles of campfires, we have the teepee, the log cabin, and the lean-to. Now it's time for you to practice your skills safely. Now, in order to start building fires, you have to earn your fireman chit. So talk with your scoutmaster, and let's get that set up right away uh, so that you can start helping out building the campfires during your troop outings. Fires are really fun, but can also be dangerous. So make sure you always have water around to properly douse your fire. Now the big thing with fire is we want to make sure that the coals are cold out. And a way you can tell if someone has drowned a campfire is by looking at the ashes. So if you have lots of big chunks, lots of big chunks, things like that, that means that this fire was doused. If you have a lot of light feathery ashes, that means the fire burned out and someone was not following that leave no trace of minimizing your campfire impacts. Smokey Bear, he's watching you. So that concludes our video on the three types of fires for the Scouts BSA Rank Advancement video series. On behalf of the Chattahoochee Council, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us, give us the thumbs up, share our videos, and more importantly, share your skills with each other. Everybody can learn from these, and part of being a scout is being helpful. So help your peers, help your fellow scouts, and we'll see you on that trail to Eagle. You know, there are so many types of fires. You got log cabin fires, trench fires, star fires, ditch fires, pit fires, fires in a can, fires above the ground, fires below the ground, fires in a fireplace. There's just so many fires, all kinds of fires.